What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, great evening. Um, I am... Of course, any day that I wake up and can get out of bed is a great, great day and a great, great evening. And am thankful for all of those and thankful for each and every one of you guys. It's actually been fun being a Cowboy fan in free agency, even though we have yet to sign a free agent. We have at least shown some signs of life. If we think about where we were last year, where we literally let a Pro Bowl punter go, we ended up trading Amari Cooper for a ham sandwich. Actually, no, 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 no. It was a potted meat sandwich with mustard on stale white bread. And you know how old white bread has to be to get stale. That's basically what we did. We let go um, Cedric Wilson. We got rid of Lyle Collins. We got rid of, uh, or we screwed the pooch on the Randy Gregory deal, Connor Williams. And, you know, it was literally, we pissed off D-Law, you know, where it was literally Catboy pissed him off. Um, we pissed off J. Ron Curse. And we had to sit through listening to the Eagles getting this guy and getting that guy and this guy and everybody telling us how bad we were and how we were the worst team in football, how our front office stunk. And it was just bad. And it was just really bad. So the fact that the second day of free agency, we went out and we got ourselves a cornerback that we addressed one of our weaknesses, didn't give up a, you know, a major draft pick. We ended up giving up a fifth round compensatory pick. We still got two left. It's just actually amazing. Now, if we actually do do the big move that we've been hearing about, unless we're finding out that this was the big move, this will be good. So on uh, DallasCowboys.com, they have the first interview. Shout out to, of course, the Cowboys that always get the scoops on the Cowboys' new players. Um, we have Stefan Gilmore in his own words. So I just wanted to, you know, just just bring in and introduce you to our next cornerback. And I love his attitude because what I had heard earlier today, he was like, basically, they're going to have to throw at somebody. The Diggs may have more people going at him than he did before, but we're going to get the ball. You know, get me Danny. Give me the ball. All right, let's listen in. I'm here with five-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro, former NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore, acquired by the Cowboys via trade with the Indianapolis Colts. Stephon, talk a little bit about your first reaction when you got the news that you'd be headed here to Dallas. You know, I was very excited. You know, I've been a you know cowboy fan all my life growing up as a wow. kid. My dad, my cousins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I texted my uncle. I had a surprise for him. He was so excited. So um, I'm just excited to be in town. You know, finally see the, you know this amazing facility. I'm just looking mm -hmm. forward to you know making plays in this cowboy uniform. Once the news broke, there was a, a lot of optimism and, and positivity streaming out on Twitter from guys like Trevon Diggs, Micah yeah. Parsons, even C.D. Lamb. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about what it would mean to join this team playing opposite Trevon Diggs behind a pass rush led by Micah Parsons. Oh, it's going to be great, man. You know, obviously you got to work great hard for us. Know, put the work in. But, you know, those guys have been great players in this league. You know, I'm just trying to come in and add my piece, of, piece to the puzzle. So I'm looking forward to, you know, competing with like people like CD C. Lamb and, and, um, and practice and getting better and pushing each other, even Dak. You know, he's a great quarterback. So I'm just looking forward to, you know, um, you know going for the, for the ship. You know, that's, that's what, you, what we play the game for. So Now, speaking of pieces of the puzzle, you are going to be a huge piece of that puzzle. You're a Super Bowl champion. You know what it takes to, to get to that level. Yeah. How what's going to mean to be able to mentor some of these younger guys, especially in the safety core? You got young guys like Deron Bland coming up. I'm sure you're aware of what he was able to do in a breakout season last year. Those are the kinds of guys who are going to be looking up to you. What, what will you say to those guys to help get them to the next level? I just um, you know I've been in the league for a while, you know, and, and it takes a lot of hard work, you know, um, and you got to kind of have that short term memory, you know, no matter what you did in the past, you got to really prove yourself each and every year. So um, I'm just going to come in and 
and do what I do, work hard. But, you know, I do like teaching the youth, you know, teaching them the things that I didn't know as a young player to, to help them be a better player. Now, the Cowboys defense excelled at taking the ball away. And obviously, that's something that you are no stranger to yourself. What do you, Stephon Gilmore, feel this Cowboys defense can be in 2023 going forward, seeing what they were able to do and now having you as a piece in that puzzle? I think, um, like I said before, you know, you got to put the work in. You know, each area starts over. Um, but I think, you know, we got a lot of talented players on defense, um, people that takes the ball away. You know, myself, I like, you know, making plays on the ball. So I'm just looking forward to, you know, putting the work in and, um, you know, leaning on my teammates to do the same. You love taking the ball away. Deron Bland loves taking the ball away. Trevon Diggs loves taking the yeah. ball away. Do I smell a little bit of a competition as far as yep. who will get the most takeaways in 2023? Uh, that's what it's about. You know, you play this game for competition, you know, um, and it's a lot of competition on the team. So that's always a great thing. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Newest Dallas Cowboys cornerback, Stephon Gilmore. Wow. I love that. I love that. Okay, so our secondary. It's going to be pretty, pretty good. And we're going to have flexibility. You know, it's going to be nice having, you know, the Duran Blands and things like that. They're going to be mixing. This is where you look at it and say, okay, the Cowboys have done a phenomenal job at getting us playmakers and getting us a blend of young guys, young guys that are still on their rookie contracts and second years, you know, because going into last year, we didn't know these guys. But now you all of a sudden look and say, this Cowboys defense, that back end, they're going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback from the secondary. You're like, what are you talking about? It's what's called a coverage sack. Because it's you know it, it's a give and take you know the the ankle bones connected to the the the, the shin bone and the shin bones connected to the kneecap and the kneecaps connected to the thigh bone, but if you have a great pass rush, which you want to have, okay, that's forcing the quarterback to throw the ball quicker, duh, and hopefully having a bad pass, which means your secondary doesn't have to hold the ball as long. Okay, that makes sense, right? which is why I always want that 800-pound that, that monster in the middle that's an immovable force that, that literally will collapse the pocket and allow the outside guys to get in. But that, that's another thing in itself. But if you have a great secondary that can cover people and does not leave a man open, then the quarterback's looking around trying to find, you know, where, where, where's it? Like, oh, you mean like with Dak this year because his guys couldn't get open. Yeah, then you throw picks because there's having to throw in tight windows. Oh, now I understand because we didn't have a good receiving core. And when that happens, you get the takeaways, you get the sacks, you get plays that are made because of that. There you go. So I love this move. This definitely scratched off the list of needs for the Cowboys. And that's what you want to do between now and next April. Excuse me, April. Um, we're only five weeks, six weeks. Six weeks or five weeks? It's the 27th of April. It's six weeks. We'll be there. Joe Boo Sports is going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here we come. Yes, that's right. We're going to Kansas City for the draft. We'll be there covering it live. But between now and the draft, it would be phenomenal if the Dallas Cowboys could go ahead and get another one of these holes taken care of. When you look at this and say, yeah, if we do sign Odell, and I don't think the market right now, the, the funny thing right now to me is, is this. It seems like the market on free agents, and maybe I'm wrong, we're not seeing the eye-opening signings, big, big money where you just go, oh, my God, I can't believe they got that much. When you look at what the running backs are getting, you find out that you know it's going to be a dismal market for Zeke Elliott. Zeke, it's going to be a harsh reality because – Running backs have become meh. And people are going to look at Zeke and say, no, we ain't paying you that. Yeah, it would not surprise me if we're talking about a veteran minimum contract for Zeke Elliott. 
which is sad. It's a good thing he made his money before because there's a lot of running backs that are getting veteran minimums that never got that second contract. But be that as it may, I feel like with the wide receivers, you've got the same kind of deal this year as well, as well as even the tight ends. I'm not sure Dalton Schultz is going to be getting that $14 million he's looking at because, you know, if you're not picked up in those first couple of days, that's when the big money's flying. Now, all of a sudden, you become discounted. So the longer it goes for some of these guys, the better the price is or the better the negotiations go. Now, there are certain situations where it's a little different, like for Bobby Wagner. For Bobby Wagner... He is, of course, his own agent, and he's a, he's a veteran. He's not in a rush to sign with anybody. And I still believe that he ends up being a Dallas Cowboy because I think he could look at that and say, I know the system. I know the coach. They want me, and I can show up later. I can go do my thing and be cool and not have to learn a new scheme. Because, see, when you're older, the last thing you want to do is learn some new tricks. You like everything consistent. You want your coffee the same way every morning, okay? You want your eggs cooked a certain way every single time. You don't want change. You don't want change. And that's where you look at a person like Bobby Wagner who, you know, he experienced another team with the Rams and things like that, but it probably didn't feel familiar. But if he goes to the Cowboys and you look and say, they got a Stephon Gilmore, this could be really, <laughs> this could be really good. This could be like the Legion of Boom all over again. And that's what I'm hoping because, see, here's what I like about this defense. You know, the Legion of Boom was known for kicking your ass, beating you up. This team is getting to be on defense very, very physical. You got Micah Parsons, and you've seen him take a tight end and just body slam him like he's in the WWE. D-Law can be physical, too. If we could just get a guy like Calais Campbell, that's a part-timer, who is an immovable force, but a force to reckon with. I'm not, and, and I know people are going to say, he, he's old. He is older. He is old. I literally watched Calais grow up from you know his first couple of years in the NFL and watching him and seeing everything that he's been. He has been phenomenal. Uh, NFL man of the year. But you get him out there for about 20, 25 plays a game, he's a game changer. You get guys like this because, see, this is the thing that I want you to understand right now. This is the change for the Cowboys. Tyron Smith and his deal is like, wow. He took the bullet for the team. Now, it's laden with all kinds of incentives that I love. I love the incentives of it because if he's not able to play, well, it's not costing you enough money that it precludes you from getting somebody else if you need to. You're not biting the bullet on it. We got more money now that we can do something with to get other players. And he's looking at this and saying, I'm taking less money because this is the end of my career. I'm rich. I'm rich. I didn't waste all my money having to pay my family and stuff, okay? You know, we took care of that problem in my early years and got the restraining orders. I've got money to last me, but this has been my home. And if I give back some of this money, then maybe, just maybe, we can try and get some other players in here to win it all. So you see that. Then the Cowboys go ahead and they get a Stephon Gilmore. If the Cowboys can get another premier player, if the Cowboys can get another premier player on this roster, on this team, then... Other guys start looking and saying, wait a minute, hold up. You see what they're doing in Dallas? They're, they're, they're building a juggernaut. And see, that's when people start looking at it and saying, oh, shit. That's going to be a really good. You know what? I'd like to go there. They got a real shot at you know going to the Super Bowl and, and, and not doing an Eagles, winning it. You follow what I'm saying? And see, this is that public relations thing that you do. That makes others want to be part of you. If you're a defensive player right now, you're looking at that defense and saying, man, you know, you got Michael Parsons. Uh, he could be a generational talent. You've got 
you know, uh, Stefan Gilmore, former NFL defensive player of the year. You got Dan Quinn. If you're a defensive player, you look at that and say, my job is going to be easier being on that defense. And we're going to be really, really good, along with saying, you know, you can be one of them boys, and maybe you get that them boys, you know, post-Cowboys, you know, bump where everybody loves you because you're a Cowboys. And if you win a Super Bowl with them, you, you are cowboyed up for life. And so if the Cowboys are able to do something like that, I think all of a sudden everybody starts looking and saying, I want to come to the Cowboys. Not like it usually is when they say that because they're trying to get a contract bigger with somebody else, but actually want to come here. And that's the thing that you want. And <clears throat> understanding that coming here, they'll give you a little bit of a break because they see this as an opportunity to make it all the way. And that, my friends, when you can do that like New England did for so many years, <clears throat> you are in there. You are really in there. So appreciate you guys being here. We'll end this video with this. I don't often watch Eagle channels, but when I do, I watch Philly 500. So I can hide. round this team is so good that they don't need to take I, I, they don't need anything else right they're so good they don't this has to be for something stay thirsty my friends and follow the joke